The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman. Hi guys, technicians. Oh, this is Friday, the 3rd, and we're looking at the Dow up 169, S&P's up 37, but I want to get to this. I had this question yesterday. I, I didn't do my show at my usual time. I did it earlier and it was replayed. So I sent, and I only saw the message uh, this last evening, and I sent a message immediately. Uh, this is to Monique and Chris, and the question came in, um, uh, hi, Basil. I hope you're well. The market seemed to be stabilizing, so I was looking at some buying here. i like to add back a tranche of CVNA and open for long-term holes. I had good entries near the two, 20, uh, 2023 lows, and I had taken off quite a bit at the July highs. Thanks for, being, for the great advice. But I was hoping to add some back. Fundamentals are weak, so I'm a bit cautious. So what I I thought I said, oh, could you please cover these stocks in your show if possible? Thanks for all you do, Chris. So I thought I would sent this last night, quickly checked this morning, and I see that it was still sitting there. I, something happened, and I didn't send it off. So I sent it off early this morning, and what I had said was, I would st if I was in my hour yesterday, I would have said, start your positions, but a small position, and let's see what happens tomorrow, because you could add to it, or we'll manage the trade after that. But you want to get in. So I don't know if they um, they got the got the note, but they if they got in this morning, it was good because Carvana, C R V C V N A, um, was weaker earlier. It opened at 2870, it's trading right now at 32. Um, so I hope you start your position. And that I would stay with exactly what I had said. Start your position. And give it just a little while. I want to see what, how this plays out. There are a couple of things I'll talk about during the show, but that's that's your starter position of your the beginning of anticipating a bigger move. But I agree with you. The chart is really not nice. It's really an ugly chart. It's a fabulous gap and follow through today. So maybe it's doing something that's going to be uh, be improving. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, at least you I hope you hopefully you got your foot in the door. Open was the other one. Let me just close this out here. Open. Um, here we go. O P E N. <clears throat> um, open. I said the same thing. Open Door Tech Inc. It's a platform for a, a residential real estate. Oh, I didn't say Kavana. Kavana is basically um, is an online uh, auto auto uh, dealer, and so and this one is uh, for a platform for residential real estate. I, I would have said, I did say exactly the same thing, but I must say, when I looked at it, I thought, you know, in the real estate business with the yields so high, but if yields are starting to come down, that's something else. So within that context, what I am saying to you is that hopefully this, you got in early this morning at the open at 229. It's at 244 right now. And I do exactly the same thing. And that's for all those big gaps that we saw to the upside over the last couple of days. Just you need a little time because... If you, you're going to miss it, it's because it just keeps going. Like it, like the market initially this morning just kept going to the upside. The gap up, on its way. Um, and that's what happens with these major, the, these major reversals. And now I'm going to talk about it in the terms of what's going on. Um, so this is what I wanted to go through. I'm going to go through each, uh, through each index. Look, in the Dow... I was talking about the volatility, just in my own experience, the VIX index, when this is high VIX index and starting to move higher, and you have a lousy couple of days, go, a really a, a drop down, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. And then all of a sudden, you get this acceleration down. On a Friday, it's unusual to have the Friday as the low. We bought the diamonds on the low of March the 6th of 2009. It was a Friday. The Tuesday was the S&Ps. So my thinking was that the volatility index, so Friday was uh, the 27th, right? Yeah. So Friday, the VIX index was quite high, and the market was pulling back. So what I was thinking is, and what I'd said over and over, is that to get the kind of low, which is a multi-week, multi-month low, 
it would be incumbent for me to see the volatility index because the futures on Sunday night were needed to be. I wasn't saying that they should do it. I was saying that they needed to be strongly uh, down. In other words, very, very weak. And the they should follow through into Monday morning and it should be ugly with the news over the weekend, just horrible. And you get a multi other geo, geopolitical and economic things that are very negative over the weekend. And then all of a sudden what you've got is something very, very different. You've got um, the setting for a, a reversal on Monday, which could be a really sharp reversal. Instead, what happened Sunday night was kind of not bad. And then actually the future started to rally. And then Monday, we were, look, let me show you the S&P. This is Monday. Monday, uh, we're way above the low of 4103.78, and we started running. Now, normally what I would do, my mindset was kind of on that VIX index, and my thinking was, well, maybe it's delayed by a couple of days that we do get that move up, and the, but by the end of the day or even the following day, maybe we get that turnaround and the VIX index pulls back. But what I didn't use and what I almost, almost always do and, and every you know, once in a while we get fooled by these things. So the let me go back. To, let me go to the Dow. The Dow also gapped up and has just been riding all the way and is stalling right here at this uh, inside track repellent zone. The unbalanced volume, and I did talk about this on Monday and I spoke about it on Tuesday and Wednesday that the unbalanced volume gave the exact ictus, just as it gave us the exact day of the short, which we're still short, uh, from the high of August the 1st at 35,679. Look at that. The unbalanced volume was perfect. And talking about techniques, tomorrow uh, Tim Ward will be demonstrating all his techniques. Uh, had some very really good calls, so it's worth going to the front page of TFNN. Check it out for Tim's uh, webinar coming up tomorrow. Now, what I am saying is, so there's unbalanced volume, and the unbalanced volume, I spoke about this, but I didn't use it. I, you know, sometimes our head gets in the way of our eyes. The eyes just said, hey, look, you've got yourself a very nice V-shaped turnaround. Stochastics uh, for that moment was about 10%, didn't go to the single digits, which I thought was a possibility. The relative strength, look at this gray line here. The relative strength gave right on the day of the low, gave a turnaround. So I have to respect this. So the question is, now what? So as far as I'm concerned, we are long from the Dow from March of 2020. We're along the Dow from October. We are now short from August the 1st. We've had very nice trades in between. I did not go to, we tried, but we missed the pull, any pullback. We tried from the second day from, uh, that was a Monday, that was from Tuesday. I wanted to buy the dips on the UDOW because that's how we've been trading it, and I missed it. So the question now is, now, two questions, really. Is this the low? Because you've been talking about a low, but not the low. My thinking here is, as I'm, I, as I'm looking at this, I want to discuss something that I, I refer to infrequently, but frequently enough if you think of it over the years. And I'm going to go to this chart right here, and that is the chart that has Chapman use the Chapman wave dark use cloud cover with the internal low and the residual low. I'll be right back. Browser Chapman does up 166, SFP's up 34. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Tigers, every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Ord joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. 
In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so just for those of you watching my uh, one minute, five minutes, and 10 minute uh, e-mini charts that I notate and I do all the work on, uh, yes, it was a beautiful cup for me, an, an arch formation from that peak F of the one minute chart, came back, retested 43.67, but still holding really well at up 39. I did it get a G slash C right here with the channel wave instance uh, restart. There's a chance that we can have one more little more pop to the 4383 level. But you can see that just buying is, if you've missed the, if missed the low, it is really hard unless you just say, I'm in, I'll have a smaller position now because I, I missed the original one, I'm in. And then you can, then you will get pullbacks. They will remember markets don't go up in straight lines. They always have or straight down. Most of the time, they have nice retracements. So I want you to just continue that thought. And what I did is the very next day, that is on Monday. It was on Tuesday. Or oh, I just wanted to see what the uh, trend gauge is right here. Uh, short term trend. Yeah, interesting. No, nothing to see. Isn't that interesting? So what I did is I said, I want to get into the Dow, but we're going to use a proxy. I'm coming back to the yellow chart in a minute. And we're going to use a proxy. And that proxy is a stock that we've been wanting for a long time. Missed the big move up and we wanted it and it's given a pullback. I want in and we're going to get in. And this will be a proxy because it's the same price. It does the same sort of thing. It's a little bit better chart formation but it's going to be our proxy for the diamonds because we're already in them, and this is a kind of a twofer. So we got into Microsoft at uh, 338, and now it's trading at 351. So yes, but that's not good enough because people who wanted to get into the, a new position in the, in the Dow or the UDOW, we've missed that. I, we'll get that, but it might be at a higher price. So I'm going back to this chart. So I had written in on the 6th, I think it was the 6th of October, that this could have been an internal low, and now we're waiting for the residual low. The whole thing with the VIX index would have been perfect if the VIX index was just even kind of high on Monday and we got some kind of a dip. Then I want to say this is, a, this is not the low, but much better than just a low. But we didn't get that. So this is, a, and I've been talking about this all the time. In fact, I'm the one that brought up the, the issue that Bondi, Crudy, Dolly, Goldie, and Vixie, that's bonds, crude oil, uh, dollar, uh, gold, and volatility index are not doing their normal things at all. They're doing something different, 
every week and every day they they don't do what they normally do. And I should have not been fooled by that, but that happens once in a while. You know, I've got almost every single low, a bunch of the highs uh, in the Dow for quite some time. What can I say? <clears throat> but in the meantime, uh, I will work on that. We, we've got a plan. We've got a plan of action, and I'll, I'll work on how we're going to do that. Meantime, um, this particular chart, I have now no choice but to say that maybe that really was the internal low, and this is a residual low. It matches so well the previous internal low and residual low, internal low and residual back in October. Isn't this incredible? This is the low of um, September at 28667.10 bounces and it comes back to where to the residual low and that is a slightly lower low and that's on October the 14th 2022 that's the day we went along actually so um yeah I think that this is a man I've taken this thing that used to be over here because we were in such a long-term um consolidation phase and we have now we're we going back into this what could be resistance so as it stands right now, I have to say that I have to set aside all my uh, all the aspects where I'm saying, "Wow, now, now what do we do?" There's no, what do we do? I just there's been a, a big a big move to the upside. Uh, together with it, you've got all the things that you really want to see. They weren't there the other day. Look, the TLT. Whoops, where did it go? I, I typed that in the wrong place. Let me just type that again. I N D U. Now I can go to the new chart, and that's the TLT. Got a lot of questions. I want to get to them. It's Technical Friday. There's leg B in the TLT at 86.32. Oh, we've seen this before, but the reason why this is important, look, at, and I mentioned this before, that the sideways move was starting to see a lot of improving um, technicals, but the nine period hadn't moved cross positive. Today, cross positive. So this is a good sign. It's it's about, I still don't have a technical buy mode indicated because the stochastic's only at 53%. On balance volume's good, but not great. MACD's really good. And the uh, nine is just crossed over the 14. So by the end of the day, on a daily basis, I might have to give, the, I will probably give this a buy mode, meaning that there could be a pullback, but we should go to a leg C, then a peak C, and then a leg D. And that would put you into the 90-ish uh, area, 90, maybe 91. And then we'll have to see what happens. And this is slowly improving the weekly chart. So, yes, now you've got yields coming down. I spoke about this last week. I said, look, the TBT made a peak F in the 44 area. I'm going to respect that. There's the dreaded H pattern that took it out. I spoke about that yesterday. Uh, I think it was yesterday. And, um, and yeah, we are below that key support level. Of 3890 or something? No, 3990. No, that's the low. 3911. And we're trading at 3888. Look at the dollar, DXY. The dollar is underneath the channel wave, in the, besides the declining down channel. Uh, down channel would be a declining, right? Uh, you've got the inside track propellant zone. This is the repellent zone. You're right on it. You're actually just under it. You've got the weekly chart. Yes, it's at a leg B, a peak B, but it's under these previous highs. So it could fail. If this was at a new uh, multi-USA recovery high, I'd say, no, it's going to C and it's going to a D. But you, I can't say that right now. I can say it's at a B. MACD is good. Stochastic's at 84%. Very good. Nine's way over the 14. So the dollar is not yet done. But for the moment, it is, look at this, EUR, uh, USD. Euro, nice leg D right on the 200 period moving average. We spoke about this the other day, and there it is. Uh, and a new leg B, A, gray leg A, gray leg, a gray peak A, and a gray leg B as we speak in the weekly chart. Nice. Uh, look at the USD JPY. Look, we weren't we talking about this double top that went to the 148s, and we went to 140, we went to 150, was it 151? few days ago, we went to, yeah, 151.72. 148.82 was the high way back in 2022. And I kept saying, this is a technique where in the chat wave rectangle that goes to a lopsided 
cup or a V-shaped pattern, you make higher highs and higher lows. You should go to your peak A, peak B, or even a peak C, and maybe even a D, right on just under or just above the previous high, and then watch out because that's where you could get a bit of a pullback. Okay, so all of those things are saying this is something to take seriously. That wasn't there, but the most important thing that wasn't there is the semiconductors. Remember, look, they did this beautiful pattern. We were short, we're still short, we're taking profits, of course, but we're still short from the core position from 161, 17 was the high on the 31st. August 2nd, we showed 150, just over 159. And it came all the way down and made this cluster formation right in the template inside track, for balance zone, and now it's running. That was so important. If the SOHs were fading, I'd say, nah, but they're actually running. So that's a really good sign. So I think we might have seen some kind of a high on the gaming check line. Uh, one minute chart, yep, so that's the peak in the five, a peak D in the uh, 10 minute chart. I'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Uh, can this, the selling it just keeps coming in. Buying just takes over. Selling comes in. Buying takes over. And I just, I, I need to follow up there. So I, I like to go in order of all, all the questions that came in. Didn't have a chance to take, check out the Tiger TV questions. I'll get there. So, so the SMHs, this, it wasn't there. So one of the reasons why um, I didn't think that Monday would be VLO and I, I still have to, I'd have to do some work over the weekend. 
because it has many of the ingredients that I'd look for other than the VIX index, but that's changed quite a bit. It did get to 23, which is, I mean, that's pretty high. Um, so let's just leave that aside because now we've got the semis moving. I want you to just look at the XLF because that's really important. I've got to have the financials moving as well, especially with rates declining. And yep, very nice. Right on the 200 period moving average of 33.69. It's done this before many times. In fact, that's where it's stored. Look how beautiful this 200 period moving average is like a sine wave up and then up and then down and then down. So we'll see what happens here. The weekly monthly chart is still an arch formation. So now what I want you to do is this. So the GDX um, is having a decent move today. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't. And all of a sudden it's having a nice move and it's gone from uh, green to pink for a week, uh, for a day, and then back to green. So I, I needed to see how gold responded other than that Middle East situation, which is going to continue for a while. It might have a hiatus at some point, but it should continue. Um, in the meantime, what we're looking at is, I'm just looking at the chart. I'm not looking at any geopolitical aspect. And you can see the MACD came down and now it's trying to cross positive, but it hasn't. You've got the pink nine period moving average flipping today to green. That's a good sign. You've got the stochastic kind of weak at 27% on balance volumes running, but a bit weak. This gray line, the red for strength, has no idea where it's going to go next, but it is running right now. So I think that I can now look at gold as gold. Before I was looking at gold as a geopolitical tool. Now I think I can say, hmm, now maybe it's worth to have in the portfolio a gold stock or the GDX. Uh, the GDX is maybe a generic thing. I happen to like IAU, which is what it's, it's the GLD, but it trades at one tenth the price of the of, of the GLD. And my thinking always is, as long as it's a, a solvent uh, instrument and, and has backing, etc. Um, I, I see no reason why that why why pay the price of the GLD when you can go for one tenth of price at thirty seven and get exactly look at this chart formation. There is a slight difference, but my eye can see it. I'm probably sure that uh, not most people GLD. Let me just go there. GLD type it there. Press it there. Something's going on. You nervous? There. So here's the GLD. There's your legs peak C. There's your peak D. Uh, they very much the same. But except my eye says, you see this pattern right here? You see this from this high that was in around about July, August of 2020. You come down. Look at this. These are tools that I teach in my, my webinars when I, that when I do them. For my subscribers, if you're a subscriber, you know that you can go to the on the site, you can get all my webinars. So yeah, let me see if that PC minus was on the line right there. I like to join exactly unless I hit a candle. Yeah, so this went to a gray A, pull back. Um, and there's a second arch formation. So keep your eye on this right one. And let's go to the IAU. Yeah, it's a slightly different. It's just a little bit more positive. I don't know why. Look, this is this is more parallel, and the other one was sloping down. So it's just fractional, but I happen to like. Look, IAI and the GLD is IAI is 37, GLD is 184. Same chart formation. Now it does have the Chapman wave falling X formation, right there. Look, I'm joining these lines, joining these lines here, and that says who. This is the one that says you can very quickly spike to the upside and then go one to one to the to the upside based on yeah look based on uh, the distance and that would take you around about to 187 in the uh, GDX that would take you to GDX how did I do that I IAU IAU that would take you to about 3890 uh, no 38. 3838. 38. Um, and you're training at 37.72 right now. So, um, yes, I do. I think that this is the, the dollar hasn't broken down yet, but the dollar is weakening. And this is really important so that gold has the opportunity now to do its own thing, not based on fear, but based on structural 
and the integrity of the chart patterns that we're looking at. So I like it. I don't know if I'm going to see very much more if it stalls at the 200 period moving average of 29.61, uh, 28.63 is where it's at right now. It looks to me like that whole area just going to 30 is going to be a little difficult to do unless it spikes right through it. Over the weekend, something happens on Monday by Tuesday, you're looking at the GLD at 30.75. Then I'm saying that is a nice breakout. Leg C, strong leg C. But then monthly chart is still very weak, and the weekly chart is still very weak. So all I can say is um, you have to go one step at a time. Oh, and this one, yep, today also turned L. It went pink for just a day, uh, two days maybe. Okay, so the, the answer is, yeah, I think it's in play. And I need to see like ASA, which is ASA, it's a gold mi uh, miner. Um, it's a, sorry, it is a hedge fund made up of five gold stocks, South African stocks, I believe they're five, maybe they're more by now, but you've got the same sort of thing right here, that you've got a very nice day today, it's up 39 cents, up almost 3% at 13.73, but you need a lot more work to say that it's going to really start to climb into the 1430s, but it seems to be wanting to move, because the MACD is good, stochastic is improving, but it looks very weak, but the relative strength is just starting to rally. So, yeah, I'm just saying to you, I I haven't done anything for the portfolio for subscribers. Um, with the, We did have the GLD, but I got out a long time ago. I just said, I don't like it, and it just kept tanking. So, uh, yeah, GDX. You can, I would put my foot in the door, absolutely, but I'm, that's all I would do right now. It has to prove itself. Next question came in. Um, for GLD. A lot of people ask me about PLTR. I guess this is a favorite. Whoa, had good earnings. It was looking horrible. It made a peak D in the daily chart. Palantir Technologies develops data fusion platforms. Comes tumbling down. I didn't draw this in because I thought, gee, where? I'll draw it in and then it does something else. But in the meantime, back at the end, it's kind of like a, a channel, down channel that it broke out of. I love that when it does that. And now it's holding beautifully with a new recovery high. Trading 1865 up 69 cents. This is now a pattern that it didn't look like before, and then I thought it did look like, and now it looks like, looks like it again. You know, I talked about the, the lowercase h, the dreaded h. If it holds well, and then it starts to run in close to the heart height, that's usually very bullish, and it changes a negative pattern into a cup, a deep cup formation. And look, this is exactly what it's doing. So the target for me will be for Palantir, the next big upside target and resistance to 20 point, uh, 20.24. Dow's up 184. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, sorry, I, I had a question. I guess I cut out, but I, I never finished with the balance here. I should have said uh, the weekly chart made a peak A, a peak B, a peak C, and this is a leg D, but it's underneath the 30 point, uh, did I say 30, no, 20, 20.24 20 high of the four, a week of the 4th of August. So um, that would be my target, and it needs to get above that since it's already in leg D, because when you get to D, you want to be breaking to new lefts, above the left side highs that's really important and the weekly chart now is improving it wasn't improving before and this is the low it's a double bottom right here from, from the july august uh, the august low the august high and the august low it goes from 20 down to the uh, 13s high 13s just under 14 so this is a very nice move um and i'm going to have to call this an e slash b this is chapter wave technical friday so what i'm doing here is there's a gap up, which is always very good if it breaks the left side highs in the gap up. There's the daily chart and then closes above that. But I still have to consider because it never took out the 13. Where was the starting point? 1368. Oh, I had it all typed in. Right. 1368 low of uh, August. That's your starting point. And this particular low over here was just over 14. So that keeps us, the, the buy mode in place. And it says, even though it went pink, Negative, and you have a down arrow. There could be an um, upside down V here. That's that carrot that you put on top if that becomes the next major top. So I'm just saying this looks really good as it stands because this you needed the second day follow through. But I'd like to see a close. In fact, I'll make it as clear as possible. A close above the 11th of October, the high of 1844. And it's trading at 1861 right now. And the target on the left side should be 20.24. And I would say that I've got a left side, right side price time match, but it doesn't go to this low here. It does. So I'm going to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. It could go to next week, 2024. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more, but within about another five or six trading sessions. That's not just the week. All right. So there we go. And next question was a natural gas, UNG. So UNG right now is trading up. It's unchanged. It's 7.29. So my, my contention has been, and we haven't got back in it, uh, that this is the sideways move is slowly building upside pressure. It's holding the support line, the mid-channel, the long, narrow rectangle. Hasn't broken below it. If it does, you've got to expect a test of the $6 to 5.87 level even. But I don't think that's going to happen at this point. But I'm looking for it slow. Look at the time it takes, a couple of weeks after every break to the upside. So within, I, let me look at the calendar. It's November. By the, by the 15th to the, between the 15th and the 22nd, that's where I anticipate, if I'm correct in the slow, little like a kettle, putting on a slow kettle uh, or a pot boiling, um, that it will go to the eight. Point twenty area, and that's where it has to make eight dollars support and move to eight thirty-five and eight seventy 
and slowly but surely get into the nines. I don't know if it's going to do that just yet in the next couple of weeks, but the break to the upside is really important. And it'll only do that if it can hold maybe 668 is absolutely key support. If it closes under that, then I'm saying it's going to take even longer. But I, the way it's looking right now, I'm looking at that. Next question came in. Could I, I wrote it down, didn't I? Did that, did, did. Oh, so this one here. Yeah. You know, you can have patience. I had so much patience. I had patience. Let me just do this first. There's a stock that I uh, mentioned to subscribers. I said, wow, doesn't this have everything that you'd be looking for right now? Whoops, I should have moved it to the left, to the right. Moved it to the right and moved it to the right. There. Well, I can't move it on the right here. Remit me Global Inc. Financial Services for Immigrants. I said, surely we're looking at a situation here that there are so many immigrants that many of them are starting to save I mean, that's the traditional thing with immigrants. Surely this is a fantastic stock. It was in the 20, yeah, it was way back here, right, right in the 22, 23 area. And I said, you know, I just, I can't really pull the trigger on it. The chart is looking good, but it looks, I don't know enough about this. It's kind of, an, it was an IPO, it was all the way in the 50s as it broke out, as it came out back in 2021, and then it stumped to the 6.66 area. Remember, that was the low of the S&P March the um, 9th of 20, uh, 2009. Anyway, 6.66. I said, I just, I need patience. I want to see how it holds on, on any pullback in this big rectangle on the support in the 23s. So it goes to peak F and pulls back. It goes to peak D, and I said, I still... It's only a couple of points above where I want it. I don't understand it. It should be great. And then so I pull back, and then I make this double top, 27.95. Uh, this is R-E-L-Y, relies the symbol, uh, on the 19th of uh, October, and it retests it right here. And that was on the 1st of November. And I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, I still don't, either I don't understand it, but something, it's acting so well, I don't know why I can't pull the trigger for subscribers to get in. Something, it's just, there's something I have to wait for. I guess what I was waiting for was the news yesterday. I guess the earnings were disappointing. And it's trading toodle, toodle, toodle in the 27s on, mon uh, on Monday. No, Tuesday. And on Wednesday, it hits 18. I mean, look at that gap. And today, trying to rally a little bit, it's up 42 cents at 1922. Thank goodness I waited because it really was. I'm thinking, well, if I'm going to go into some kind of financial stock, I'd much rather look at Bank of America now that the, the yields are starting to come down. Uh, we have, this is the first time we haven't got into it in seven years or something. Just been waiting and waiting. It's still way under the 29 level at 28.36. Um, if it's going to work, I'll, I'll do some homework here. But so the question came in, what about Bank of America now? And I'm saying now I think it's more viable, but uh, it's a real quick and two-day move from the 26s to the 29s. Let's see how it does fill the gap, which I think it will at some point over the next couple of days. And then we'll see, because it was really important that the XLF gets a good move, and here it is, gaps up, and it goes from the 20, from the, sorry, 31, 39, 31, 36 area. No, it was at 30, 31, 36 on the 27th, and here it is, five sessions later at 33. Look how quickly it came, it came quickly down. But it's more, it came down for four days, and then it took us time, and then it had that single, did that down day on Friday a week ago. This is a good recovery in a shorter period of time. So I'm really pleased with the XLF. So what was the question again? Oh, so I wanted to just do that. And the next question that came in was, um, DK, uh, the reason why I mentioned it is because I had patience and patience and patience not to get into rely until I, it proved itself. I didn't know it was earnings, but it had to prove itself, and it didn't. And the other one was DraftKings, which we've tried before, and it was just tootling along low lows and lower highs. Hits the 25, I should put that in, 25, low on the 26th of October. Now it's at 31, 38. 
and look at that. There's the dreaded eight. It's the same as Palantir. Look, there's your arch formation. It holds, and it holds the left side low. And now it's making the potential cup formation. If it can close above uh, 32.65, one week, it says the next level of resistance is 34.49. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, well, folks, just in this little brief moment, so the question came in. All last week, we were talking about the volatility index, and now you're kind of just missing it. You know, this is so important. I have many tools. That was one of the tools, but if you remember correctly, you're only focusing on the VIX index, which I said was really important. But what I also said was, I need to see the semiconductors moving. They weren't moving. I need to see the financials. They weren't moving. Now, if you don't move with the markets and you keep saying, oh, the VIX, you got to get the VIX, I'm done. That is done. Last Friday was it. Monday proved that that was not the way it is. Now I have to look for other tools. Those are the things that keep us in the trade. That's what keeps you in the business. I, I'm done with that. I'll bring it back again at some point, but that one didn't work. So that's really important. That's a, that's a really important thing to consider, that if what you're anticipating doesn't work, you've got to know what the alternative is. And that's, a, that's important. Okay. So with that said, another question came in, and I'll do that real quickly if I can find it right here. Um, okay, done with that. Okay, so let me just do this. For what we're looking at today, um, the 
the key support of the E-mini is at 4367. That's the 200 period moving average of the daily. If that starts to be taken out, that impacts the five minute chart. And then the 43, 4350 to 4347 level. Now, on the upside, if there is a break into the 4383 area that can hold and then very quickly go to 4390, that just is a different kettle of fish because that's going to bring in a whole bunch of new buyers. That's what I'm saying. You've got to have the alternative. And if you remember, the reason why I went into the Microsoft position was because it was as a proxy for the diamonds. And someone just said, hey, what a great proxy that was. So it depends on the way you look. I'll be back on Monday. Check out my Google Daily Newsletter. And have a great weekend. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and all the great programming coming up.